In the upper right hand corner of this screen is a famous painting by Gustav Klimt. The painting's entitled A Portrait of Adele Blockbauer. And I just want to uh, draw a parallel between this painting um, and the process of self realization in spirituality. And what you see in the painting is uh, a woman and, you know, her environment and in fact parts of her arms are sort of dissolving into these beautiful uh, gold and, and um, other sort of patterned um, abstract images around her. And I want to sort of draw a little parallel between that as sort of the person being, let's say, the ego, okay, um, which is, you know, that idea that I am in fact a person and, um, and that there is this um, sort of sharp separation between me and the environment. You know, there's me and the not me. And then through the process of surrender or self-inquiry, we sort of poke into the mind and create these sort of uh, little punctures in it, these little temporary stoppages of thought. Um, and these little gaps that are created between thoughts or these little moments of um, true mental silence, uh, you might argue is uh, l like the gold that seems to be surrounding her, right? We can imagine that, that it used to be a kind of environment, right? A physical environment that was around the woman in the painting um, and that through a process of uh, self-inquiry or surrender, pieces of the environment are actually revealing themselves, not just the environment, but also even of her own body, are revealing themselves to be this underlying gold, which you might take to be something like, you know, consciousness or something like that you know whatever is there when the mind is stopped and so there's this process of of self-inquiry and surrender that starts to uh, blur the lines between my identity and what's not me and to reveal underneath uh, what appeared to be the physical and mental world this other thing this magical thing, this golden thing, the silent thing. Um, and through that process, which is a sort of gradual puncturing process, you know, each of these little punctures in the ego, um, we could think of as a kind of insight, a kind of aha, like, oh, I thought this was the physical environment, or I thought this was my body, but no, it's actually this golden thing underneath. All right, so this, we do this over and over again. So there's, this, there's a gradual process of this sort of mental silencing, mental stopping, mental penetration through inquiry and surrender. And every time that goal is revealed underneath, there's a moment of insight. That's the aha moment. And through this process, what we actually start to see, ultimately, is that it, the gold, which we thought was something different, that was revealed through the process of self-inquiry or surrender, is itself just one more thought. You know, instead of being the physical environment or the mental environment, now it's this golden thing, but it's still a thing, it's still gold. And conversely, then that leads to the recognition that the non-gold or the non-beautiful abstract patterns, namely the body in the painting, which is called the ego, and the gold are in some profound sense interchangeable. 
that both are parts of the painting. And the painting is the true underlying gold. So it's kind of a two-step process, right? So there's a gradual puncturing of the usual egoic way of thinking, which is the realistic painting where, you know, the woman would just be normal and the environment would be sort of around her. We say, no, no, that's not as it seems to be. Through a process of inquiry or surrender, we recognize there's actually something else. There's this golden thing, which we might call, you know, pure concentration or various states of samadhi, states of pure bliss, states of pure consciousness. So we start to recognize, oh, the usual egoic way of looking at things is incorrect. There's actually something which is a different way of looking at things, which is that everything is in some sense this golden thing. But then we recognize the golden thing is also a thing. It's just as limited in its own way as what we previously thought was the ego. And conversely, what we previously thought of as the ego is in its way just as golden as the gold. Both the gold and the woman in the painting are the painting. And so it's not about the gold being superior to the woman or the woman being worse than the gold. It's the recognition that the old way of looking at things is not the only way of looking at things. And when that's shaken by starting to see that, ah, beneath the usual physical, mental, social environment is actually something else, And then the recognition that even that way of looking at things is also a way of looking at things, right? When you have those two juxtaposed, then there is something, a unity beneath them both, which isn't another way of looking at things. It's the, the destruction of, of being rigidly bound to either way of looking at things, to any way of looking at things. It is the passing over between there's the woman and the gold. The gold is separate from the woman, the woman is separate from the gold, but then both are together. Both are the same. In some sense, the woman is the gold, the gold is the woman. Both are the painting, you know? Th th there is something which is which is shifting, which is neither one of the neither one nor the other, but underlies them both, and which isn't an element of the painting itself. So that's the basic idea of the spiritual process. First, we knock out of the original conventional way of looking at things, namely the woman in her usual physical environment, and we puncture that and we start to find that there is this sort of awareness, silence, bliss beneath that, which can be obtained through states of self-investigation, self-surrender. But then those two are recognized to be just states and even that's knocked out. Uh, even that is recognized to be 
another way of looking at things. So we go from one rigid way of looking at things to recognizing there's another way of looking at things, and then we recognize that neither of those ways of looking at things is the reality, but that both of them are themselves instantiations of something else, which is not a way of looking at things at all. And it is that beauty, which is kind of neither one perspective nor the other perspective, but accommodative of them both. Which is gradual in the sense of happening through the gradual puncturing of the mind, which is sudden in the sense of that each such puncture reveals the gold, and which is neither gradual nor sudden in the recognition that, that both of those processes are themselves part of the picture. And the picture is what it is. Shimmering between these different ways of regarding it. Being limited by none of them. Yet somehow accommodating of all of them.